Howdy, I am Tom Christensen of Neurochrome. Let's talk a little bit about organizing an electronics lab. Specifically, let's just say you have reached the point in your life where you're ready to graduate from the dining table or the kitchen counter into the corner of a spare bedroom and you want to set up an electronics lab there. You've probably watched a number of videos already that go through you know, how to pimp your lab or how to set up an entire room as an electronics lab and they rarely give you any sort of dimensions for the furniture that they use and they also rarely speak to the ergonomics and how you would actually want to set things up so that the lab will work well for you and I plan to fix that in this video. So when you start setting up your lab, you'll probably want to start with the workbench. And in my case, the workbench is this desk that I think I got for my 14th birthday, which is now almost 37 years ago, believe it or not. And it's nothing fancy, but I really like it. It's a pretty heavy duty uh, particle board with some veneer on it. And it has served me really well. It measures about 160 by 80 centimeters, or roughly, I think it's 60 by 30 inches. And that size allows me to set up equipment like oscilloscopes and have uh, the cords go out the back and still have work or a uh, workspace in front of the oscilloscope so that, you know, I can sit and work and look at the scope and not strain my neck because the oscilloscope is too far forward. So that's uh, the dimension I would go with. Um, I have pulled it out from the wall a little bit. So the distance from the front edge of the workbench to the wall is probably around a meter, maybe uh, 90 centimeters. And um, that is to allow uh, equipment to extend beyond the, the desk. And that actually works pretty handy with my uh, um, microscope here. So, make sure that you you know allow yourself enough space that you can have the equipment positioned comfortably and still work around it another thing that i found really handy is this equipment shelf here and i was actually inspired by some workbenches that we had where i used to work and it was basically a workbench with a uh, shelf on top and I thought that was brilliant. How do I recreate that given that I only have this desk? And it's actually pretty simple. So the shelf is just a piece of uh, shelving that I got at my home improvement store. I put a lip on it that has a little bit like quarter inch or five millimeters of uh, lip on it. And that uh, is actually because uh, I built this when I was still living in Seattle and Seattle has, has earthquakes. So I didn't want the equipment to rattle off the shelf in an earthquake. And now, I, when I'm here in Calgary, we rarely have earthquakes, and the ones we have are pretty minor. Um, I actually still find it pretty handy because it means that when I'm unplugging uh, things from the oscilloscope, for example, the BNC connectors can be a little bit tight. And then with the lip in place, I don't pull the scope off of the shelf here. And that's pretty handy. The equipment shelf here is attached to the wall using some shelf hangers. And they're not just regular shelf hangers. When you buy these, you will have to venture into the garage organization aisle of your home improvement store. Because if you just go into uh, the normal closet organization aisle, you will find that there are plenty of shelf hangers and they can usually support about 25 pounds, something like that, 12 and a half kilograms. And this is way more than 12 and a half kilograms, okay? And I know this because um, I started out with those shelf hangers for the just linen closet organization and I came into my lab one morning and the shelf was like, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's no good. Um, so I quickly found something that would support more weight. And the hanger system I use is actually, it's made by Rubbermaid. I don't think it's made any longer, uh, but it supports a couple hundred pounds per shelf. So um, that's plenty sturdy and you will need to find something similar. You'll want the distance from the bottom of the shelf to the workspace to be somewhere around 50 centimeters. Basically you need enough that you can get a task light in there. This is just a cheapie from Ikea. Um, and also you need enough space that you can work comfortably. Uh, the distance from the front lip to the wall is about 50 centimeters as well, and that is to allow equipment like uh, the APX 555 to sit on the shelf and have the cords go out the back without being too much jammed into the wall. So there's that. It is 120 centimeters wide, but uh, I would consider that the minimum. 
Um, but if I was to do it again, I might make it the width of the desk. So there is that. And let's talk a bit about ergonomics here. So one, we need good lighting. And I have this task light here. And I also have uh, an under counter uh, light mounted under the shelf here. And that creates, a, that along with the room lighting, creates a, a pretty evenly lit uh, work surface. The work surface itself is this uh, ESD mat that I got either at Mouser or DigiKey. And uh, do yourself a favor and order from one of the electronics distributors instead of going through Bezos Bookstore for one of these mats. Because uh, if you read the review at the bookstore, you will find that a lot of them come with uh, the ground cord missing. And that's essential. That's sort of the point of having this mat is that you have an electrostatic dissipative surface that's grounded. So that's that. Um, if you are like 90% of the world's population where you are right hand dominant, you will want your most, mostly used tools on the right. So that's why my soldering iron, my hot air station are all on the right. That's also why this top drawer in, uh, includes all or has in it um, all the tools that I use the most, so pliers and cutters and so on. And that's all there is to it. Basically, my left drawer is my junk drawer. <laughs> so that there's not that much to it, but just getting yourself set up simply like this, you know, can really go a long way. In fact, it's not until now that I've started to outgrow this setup, uh, which is why I, in a future video, will explain a little bit about how I pimped my lab. So you can watch that. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, click like and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you have suggestions for improvement of these videos, topics you would like me to cover, drop them in the comments. I do read the comments, even though it might take me a little bit to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.